What's up everyone, Eric here from Hardware for Gamers, and in today's video I'll be reviewing the MSI Bravo 15. And all the opinions expressed in this video are mine, based off of my own experience with the MSI Bravo 15. And this laptop is not a review sample, I paid for it with my own money, so if you like the video, please subscribe as well as like and share. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers so that I can actually start making some money on these videos to help pay for things on the channel. Now with all that out of the way, this is going to be a bit of a longer video, so I'm going to be leaving timestamps down in the description below. So if you want, jump to whatever interests you. To start, I'll be quickly going over the MSI Bravo. This is the A4 DDR model which retails for around 1,000 US dollars. The CPU is the Ryzen 7 4800H, which is an eight core 16 thread part that has a base clock of 2.9 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.2 gigahertz. The Ryzen 7 4800H does have a built-in APU. Now the Bravo 15 also has a discrete graphics card, which is the Radeon RX 5500M. It has 16 gigs of memory running at 3200 megahertz, and that is two 8 gig SODIMs. The OS drive is a 512 gigabyte M.2 MVME drive. It has a 15.6 inch 120 hertz full HD screen. Now the panel is called up as an IPS level panel, which really means it's a TN panel and it shows the colors are quite dull and washed out. For the I.O., starting on the right hand side, we have a RJ45 jack with two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C ports, as well as having two USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 ports. So there is no 10 gigabit per second USB. We also find a combo headset port for both audio out and microphone. Moving to the left hand side, there is one 1.4 B HDMI out, so you can do up to 2160p at 30 hertz. The power connector is in the middle, and then we have the GPU exhaust fan. I don't really like the IO layout. All the USBs are on the right hand side, so things can get quite cluttered very quickly and that the power cable is covering either the GPU exhaust vent or the HDMI out. I would have liked to have seen the power come out the back like the Nitro 5. On the bottom there are two downfiring speakers. They do get fairly loud but they get quite tinny as you raise up the volume. Then we have all these thin openings that are for intake for both the GPU and CPU fans. MSI spread these openings around to help pull air over other components. Along the back of the laptop there are more exhaust vents. Now for the built-in web camera and microphone. Both of them do seem to work well enough for your typical Skype or Zoom video calling, but the microphone does seem to have some issues picking up the bass in my voice. Now for the battery, thanks to the Radeon APU, the battery lasts about four to four and a half hours for my standard use, which includes a lot of multitasking of YouTube and Google Drive, as well as a good amount of other web browsing and Amazon Video or Netflix. Now four hours on the lower side isn't great, but it's also not horrible. And that's before you actually start switching into the battery saving modes. You should be able to get around seven to eight hours. But the battery life for gaming is pretty bad. I tested in Rainbow Six Siege and I only got a little over 50 minutes. So for gaming, you're definitely gonna wanna be plugged in. But for standard use, you should be okay for the better part of a day. But going overnight without a charge will be pretty tough, and you really have no chance of making it through the weekend without charging the laptop. Now, the keyboard feels really good when writing a script. The travel distance is pretty short, but it gives you a nice pushback. They're not too squishy, they're not too hard, they feel just right. When playing, the keyboard still feels good in shooters, but I did and I guess still do have an issue when playing StarCraft 2, my muscle memory just can't get used to the keyboard. The screen? The screen, in my opinion, is the weakest part of this laptop, or at least the strangest part. 
The panel doesn't get all that bright, so using it outside on a sunny day is very uncomfortable. And the colors are too dull and washed out to be reliable for high level photo and or video editing. Yes, it is a 120Hz panel, but the pixel response times are not good. Well, that's a lie, they're actually pretty bad, which means there's a lot of ghosting. So I really just don't get why MSI chose to go with this panel. Now the gaming benchmarks, I was expecting the RX 5500M to run very similar to the RX 580, and for the most part, this is the case. Now I did have something weird happen in Rainbow Six Siege. When trying to play in Vulcan, the game defaulted to use the APU rather than the 5500M. So what I had to do was go into the Radeon settings and force the game to run in high performance mode. Now I tested the games in three different modes, the extreme performance mode and two different customized user modes, that being the high and low performance levels with both having the fans maxed out. I did this because as you can see in the gaming benchmarks, there is no FPS difference between the extreme performance and the low performance modes when gaming. And looking at the GPU frequency charts, you can see there is not a difference between the extreme, high, or low modes when it comes to the performance of the GPU in games. Now for the temperatures, everything is in Celsius and these temperatures are the temperatures they are not deltas, I have not removed the room temperature, and the room temperature was 25 Celsius. The temperature difference between the extreme and the high performance mode with the fans maxed out was nearly a 6 Celsius drop across all measurements. Now this temperature drop does come at a cost of more noise, with the fans at 58 dBA when measured from 20 inches away. The low performance mode has a massive 11.5 Celsius drop of the max CPU temperature and a 5 Celsius drop on the average CPU temperature, this being over the high performance mode, with both modes having the fans maxed out. When gaming, I also took readings from around the keyboard area in a 25 Celsius room. In the extreme performance mode, the palm rest was 28 Celsius and the center of the keyboard area was 32.5 Celsius, but the end or the top of the keyboard area around the F6 key was a toasty 45 Celsius. Now in the low performance mode, the palm rest was again 28 Celsius, with the center of the keyboard area again being 32 and a half Celsius, and the top of the keyboard area was now 43 Celsius. So not much change between these two modes. Now moving along to the reason why I bought the laptop, and that being the productivity slash workstation stuff, I edit my videos using HitFilm, and I record all my videos at 1080p 60. Now HitFilm does have GPU acceleration. As you can see, timeline scrubbing and going through the user interface is typically very smooth. Now I do say typically because HitFilm was crashing. This has only happened when I left HitFilm open and started doing something else on the laptop for an extended period of time. And when I come back to HitFilm to continue editing, HitFilm crashed and crashed hard, often requiring me to actually hold down the power button. Now what I believe was happening was Windows and or Dragon Center was hibernating or powering down the discrete GPU and running the laptop off the APU. And when I went back into HitFilm, HitFilm can't find or detect the discrete GPU, so it locked up. Now in an attempt to fix this, I switched the power option in Windows to Ultimate Performance, and it hasn't crashed since. Now when it comes to exporting in HitFilm, I feel that it performs pretty well, thanks to HitFilm having that GPU acceleration. It took 12 minutes and 44 seconds to export my first impressions video of the Bravo 15, which is a 9 minute and 7 second video. And again, that is a 1080p 60 video. Now even though that video is a very simple video with few filters and transitions, I still feel that it did a pretty good job. In Cinebench, the single core performance was just shy of the stock 3600, and in the multi-core test, both the high and extreme modes pretty easily have the highest scores. And that is against desktop CPUs. But the low performance level took a long time, 
and had the lowest score. In PC Mark, again going up against desktop CPUs, all three modes tested of the MSI Bravo have a higher score than both the 1700 and 2600, with both the 1700 and 2600 CPUs being paired with a GTX 1070. The Bravo 15 does lose out to the 3600, but I feel that this is more because of the 5500M being put up against the 1070. Now in Blender, now apparently the 2600 is the only CPU that I have results for in Blender, and I'm not at home right now to test the other CPUs, so that's all I got. But the Ryzen 7 4800H easily wins over the stock and overclocked 2600 when using the extreme or high performance level modes. Using the low performance mode in CPU heavy workloads is not a good idea because it took almost 30 minutes to complete the barbershop scene in Blender. Moving on to the temperatures for the Blender tests, the extreme performance mode had an average CPU temperature of 89 Celsius with the max temperature at 96 Celsius. On the high performance level with the fans maxed out, the average CPU temperature was 81 Celsius and the max was 90 Celsius. So if you want to do heavy CPU workloads using the high performance level with a custom fan profile is going to be your best option. Now taking a closer look at the temperatures as well as the frequencies, in the extreme mode, the CPU temperature slowly rises up to 96 Celsius and then drops and settles at 87 Celsius with the CPU frequency starting at around 3640 megahertz and then it drops and then settles at around 3400 megahertz. In the high performance level with the fans maxed out, the CPU temperature slowly rises up to 88C and then drops and settles around 80C. The CPU frequency started at around 3800 megahertz and then drops and settles at around 3500 megahertz. Now to the point that the Ryzen 7 4800H is rated for a 2.9 GHz all-core base clock and we see at least a plus 500 MHz above that for a sustained workload isn't horrible, but it's also not great. Now looking closer at this chart shows me that the limiting factor on the CPU frequency isn't the CPU temperature. My best guess is that it is the VRMs. Now the build quality of the MSI Bravo 15 feels quite good. Now I think the main issue with this laptop is actually the software. The Dragon Center just does some weird things and I'm not sure if it's the Dragon Center doing things or Windows. And again, I suppose that is a laptop thing in general that I'm not entirely used to. But if you do set things up in a certain way, everything seems to work very well with pretty reasonable temperatures. Now again, the only issue I really have with this laptop is the panel. It just doesn't quite seem to be at the level that I want it to be at. So the big question, should you buy the MSI Bravo 15? And I'm gonna do the dad thing and answer that question with another question. What are you looking or wanting to do? Because if you're wanting to play the newest AAA games, the Bravo 15 is not what you're looking for and that's because of the 5500M and that it only has four gigs of VRAM. But if you are looking to play games like Fortnite or Rainbow Six Siege or Overwatch, games that can actually take advantage of the 120 Hertz panel, then maybe, if you're willing to put a little bit of time into setting things up. Now, if you're looking for a laptop that can do a little bit of everything just well enough, like I was, then maybe if you can get over the IPS level panel. Now the 1000 US dollar laptop space is very crowded with similar laptops like the Acer Nitro 5 and the Tough Gaming series. There are a lot of other options to look at and compare with. But at this price, I do feel that most of them are going with this type of panel that is the higher refresh rate with lower response times. So I'm really not entirely sure it really comes down to price and what you're looking for. Well, that's all I got for this one. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. And follow me on Twitter at HFG underscore YT, as well as I have a Discord server. The link is in the description below. It's a great place to get tech help. And as always, 
Thanks for watching and see you next time.